Hi, everybody. Happy New Year to you and yours. Just had my first uh, haircut of 2021. My wife loves to cut my hair, and she is great at it. Thank you, babies. Maybe you'll get a picture of it. Well, you'll see it in about three weeks, because that's about how far behind we are with the videos. All right, so we were going to size up the thing, uh, the first mock-up of the Glare Shield cover, uh, but we're not. So the first thing, basically what happened was we, we laid up the mock-up, and it looks okay. The problem with making individual small pieces of composites is you want them to be extra large. When I say extra large, is you want extra to be able to trim off. Because you, if you make it too small, well, that defeats the purpose. So what you see me doing here is we're going to cut a piece of foam that's the exact shape of the very front of the glare shield cover, right, for the panel. The idea behind this is we're going to use that to hold another piece of metal. So we've got another piece of, we got a big strip of aluminum, very thin aluminum, that is going to sit, it's going to actually be taped on the bottom side of the glare shield and will extend the back part towards where the pilot sits of the glare shield area. So basically what we're going to do is when we make the next copies, we're going to have an extension out the back so that we can make it extra long and then cut it to size after it's laid up. That's essentially what I'm trying to say. Uh, anyone that might remember the... Uh, let's see, was it? I think it was an elevator skin. So there was an elevator, was it elevator skin? Uh, that doesn't sound right. Anyway, I had a skin issue with something, and we wound up uh, putting that on the wall of shame. It was an elevator skin, because I dimpled all the metal in the wrong direction. And I didn't feel comfortable using it, so I just ordered another one and put it up against the wall. Well, that's great, because that thing's more than long enough. I think that's 52 inches long, and the whole width of the piece here is 50 inches. So I cut off two inches of the very edge of it and we're going to be using it as the extension which is great it, it does two things like I said so it makes sure that your piece is big enough but at the same time there's a tiny little lip right at the back so even as you're drowning that stuff in resin when it hardens you'll actually see that lip all the way across and it gives you a very easy uh, guide to to cut So I hope everyone has had a safe New Year's. I uh, sat in the hangar for a little bit last night and had some of the fine alcohol that uh, some of the members and CFIs have donated to me. Uh, as the president, one of the perks is apparently people just try to keep you drunk all the time. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> Seriously, though. Don Julio, 1942. That stuff is dangerous. I'm not a tequila guy, but damn, that's it's so good. It's just so good. Uh, now, if someone wants to bring me some Tandway 1854 rum, now we're talking. When I was living in Manila, uh, what was it, five years ago, six years ago? That's all we would drink was the 1854. It's, it's stuff so good. All right, now to on to some serious business. So, so as you can see, the axles on my wheels are incorrect. They should be 90 degrees off. They're, they are 90 degrees off. Uh, there, there's two holes drilled in the end of the axles, and they should be oriented horizontally. Right now, they're vertical. So I thought, all right, I'll use this piece of wood. I'll chalk the wheels down. I'll jack one side of the plane up, take the axle off. I'll then, well, I'll take the whole wheel off. Then I'll take the axle part and remove it from the caliper, rotate it 90 degrees, put it back on, and put the wheel back on. Well, that ain't happening. Uh, I want to thank Behringer for using Loctite on there that I've never heard of because I broke an Allen wrench trying to get the axle off, so that's not happening. Uh, <laughs> uh, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to jack the whole plane up. I'm going to have to take both wheels off. I swap them, right, so right to left, left to right, rotate that 90 degrees, and now I'm going to also have to switch the, uh, uh, the, the filler port for the caliper, so the, the bleed basically the bleed line um, on each one and then that's how that's going to have to happen because it's just it ain't happening like this and I'm definitely not going to try to jack that whole plane up with that unsteady piece of wood and that crappy jack so in the next video what you're going to see is you're going to see me actually get that done we're going to have to build a mechanism well we're just going to use a big sawhorse but so 
yeah, thanks, Behringer. All right, I hope everyone had a good holiday and safe. Uh, Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you for joining me. See you soon.